Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory, the video course where we talk about random variables, statistics and related stuff. And in today's part 31 we will talk about the important and famous central limit theorem. This one tells us that the so-called normal distribution or also called Gaussian distribution plays a central role for calculating averages. And for this reason the normal distribution occurs a lot in applications. However, before we discuss the assumptions of that theorem, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And if you want to get more information about the topics here, you can just click the link in the description. Okay, then let's immediately start with the assumptions of the central limit theorem you definitely should remember. Indeed, they are really simple, we just need a family of random variables and there should be iid. And again, this simply means they are independent and identically distributed. And please note, it's not important at all what the distribution is, it's just important that they all have the same distribution. And then the second ingredient here is that the variance of all the random variables exists. And since they all have the same distribution, we only have to write down the claim for the first one. Moreover, this also implies that the expectation of every random variable exists. And now if you recall what we have done in part 28, then you know that we can say a lot about this sample mean here. Namely, it has exactly the same expectation as x1. But on the other hand, the variance is much smaller. In fact, it's easy to calculate that the variance goes down with the sample size n. So this means the larger our number n is, the smaller our fluctuations around the mean are. There please recall that we have already discussed that in the videos about the law of large numbers. And now in this video today, we will see that under these assumptions we have even a stronger result. And in order to see where we are going, let's first look at a simple example. Let's say we have an urn with two kinds of boards where we take out boards without replacement. And there you should know that an urn model without replacement is connected to the hypergeometric distribution. And if you forgot about that, I can tell you we have discussed that in all detail in part 6. Ok, let's keep it simple for this example. Let's say we have these 5 boards and we pick 3. So this means each random variable xk we consider here is described by this sentence where we pick 3 boards and count the number of 1s. And here if you know the hypergeometric distribution you might know how to calculate the expectation. Here I will skip the calculation and just tell you it should be 9 over 5. Or by using decimal numbers we have 1.8. Ok, and now to get an idea of the important central limit theorem, I would say we can simulate this urn model in R. So the first thing is that we can put in the urn as a vector with 5 components. And now one sample of the random variable can simply be simulated with the sample command. So we have urn 3 and the replacement should be false. So there you see, this is our pick, we have the number 1, 0 and 1. But now please remember, we want to count the number of the boards with 1. This means we can just use the sum command here to add up all the boards. Hence, by running the script, you see we get different samples, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1 or 3 even. In other words, this just simulates one random variable xk. But now you know, actually we want to do the whole thing n times, sum it up and divide by n. So let's introduce a number n, maybe we start with 10 and then we replicate the whole thing from before. And then we can just test again and again what we get out here. Indeed, not so complicated, now we get the outcome 10 times in a vector. And now you know from the formula here on the right hand side, we have to sum it up 
and divide by n. Therefore, let's put a sum around this and a division at the end. In other words, now we have the samples for x over line n. And you might see here in the outcome, we are already very close to the expectation. Okay, and now the actual question for this video is what is the distribution of the sample mean x over line n? And since we have the whole thing in R Studio already, we can just simulate it to get a guess for the distribution. So maybe let's say we simulated m times with m is equal to 100 first. And now simulating it just means again that we replicate the whole thing from before m times. Hence I just copy the line from before in here. So in that sense here we get m outcomes. And because I don't have a better name, maybe let's call this vector simply outcomes. So indeed what we get here as an outcome, so the outcomes vector is a vector with 100 entries. And exactly this vector we can finally plot in a histogram. And in order to keep it tidy, let's say we have 50 breaks in the histogram. So finally here we see a rough picture of the distribution of x over line n for the case that n is equal to 10. However, we already see we are spread around the mean of 1.8. And in the next step I would say let's increase this n. So now it's more concentrated around the mean but also not so tidy anymore. But this is the case because our m is not large enough. So let's put this to 1000 now. And there what we see is a similar result to before. We still have a spread around the mean of 1.8. And now obviously we can just play a little bit with the numbers here. For example putting both to 2000 gives us this histogram here. And there what you should immediately recognize is that we have an approximation of the normal distribution. In other words, we find this characteristic bell curve around the mean here. Hence the peak here is around 1.8. And the spread of the curve is given by the variance and as we have seen with the pictures before, it decreases if we increase n. Indeed this is something we know from before because the variance here is proportional to 1 over n. So in fact the answer we get for our question here is that the whole thing is close to a normal distribution with expectation given as e of x1 and variance as given as that. And moreover, it's interesting to see that this property does not change at all if we change the starting distribution for the random variables xk. You can test that for yourself by choosing a different random experiment here as long as the random variables are identically distributed and independent then we get that the averages are distributed close to a normal distribution. And now the so-called central limit theorem tells us that in the limit we actually get out the normal distribution. And it turns out this is easy to see if we standardize the random variable. This simply means that we want to shift and scale the bell curve from before. So first we want to have that the expectation is at the origin, so instead of 1.8 we want to have 0 here. This is easy to get, from x over line n we just subtract the expectation of x1. And as always this one we just call mu. Ok and now the other problem is that if we increase n this bell curve here gets thinner and thinner simply because the variance decreases. Therefore the best thing would be to normalize that and to stretch the bell curve always to a variance of 1. And this just means that the random variable from before gets multiplied by a factor. And this just means that we have to take the random variable from before and divide it by the square root of the variance. And this one we could call sigma divided by the square root of n. And also here sigma is the standard deviation, so the square root of the variance of x1. So there we have it, now the random variable we consider is standardized. 
And exactly for this one, we have the famous central limit theorem. And there, please don't forget the assumptions that we have discussed at the beginning of the video. So we need random variables, which are iid, and where the expectation and the variance exists. And then we can just define the sample averages, which gives us a random variable, which we can standardize. And in order to keep it simple, let's call this one yn. And now the whole definition here tells us we take the sum of the xk until n and divide by n, and then we subtract mu. And then we multiply with the correct scaling factor, which is the inverse of sigma divided by the square root of n. So here please check that this random variable always has variance equal to 1. And now finally the claim of the central limit theorem is that the distribution of yn converges to the normal distribution when n goes to infinity. And one nice possibility to describe this convergence is to use the cumulative distribution functions of the random variables. So we consider the cumulative distribution function of yn and the one of the normal distribution with expectation 0 and variance 1. And for this normal distribution we have a short notation, we just write normal of 0 and 1 squared. So the first one represents the mean and the second one the variance. Okay, so what this sentence means is that we have pointwise convergence of functions defined on R. The reason for that is that the CDF at the point x is defined as the probability that the random variable is less or equal than this x. And now for such a fixed x, we have convergence when n goes to infinity. And it converges to capital phi of x, which is the CDF of this normal distribution. And the formula for this CDF we know because we know the probability density function of the normal distribution, which means capital phi is simply given as an integral over this density function. More precisely, we have to go from minus infinity to x. And inside we find the exponential function to the power minus one half t squared. And that's it, this is the whole integral, and numerically it's not a problem at all to calculate the values of phi for different points x. Which also means that we can use this value as a good approximation for the CDF of yn if n is large enough. Indeed, this is a typical application of the central limit theorem because you can give an approximation of the averages we get here. And again, the important point here is that the approximation always holds no matter what the original distribution was. The averages we get will always be close to a normal distribution. And this is the reason the normal distribution is so important in probability theory. And there I would say we can look at some other applications of the central limit theorem with the next videos. So let's meet there again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.